everybody and welcome back to the Roundup. Delighted to be joined again by Johnny Bailey. Johnny, cheers for coming on, mate. Two weeks ago you were on and it's the best viewed Roundup we've had in ages, so maybe it tells us something. Oof, I don't know what's happened there. There must be... <laughs> People just looking to see if they can find stuff that I've said to take the mic out of me or to, to pull back up at the end of the season, probably. No, um, no, no. But I know it was good. I'm glad the, the ratings didn't tank. That's what I was worried about. So no, I, no, I had to bring you back to salvage it. <laughs> I know, um, that's good, mate. We'll see what happens this week. <laughs> uh, right, we'll start with the Junior Cup. Uh, Auchinleck Talbot 2, Lost the Mouth 3, Largs 2, Socky 0. Um, two quite contrasting results for me. Largs, we spoke about it a couple of weeks ago and how Arnie's done a great job and you're never going to get an easy game against Largs. Beating Socky, who are one of the top teams in the East, is very impressive. But then on the flip side, I don't know what's happened with Tal, but lost your mouth have had a right long journey down the road and then go and beat Tal with 3-2. I've not watched any highlights of it, but I'm very surprised at that result. Ah, it was a shocker. I think it was... I think anybody seen that result or seen the game beforehand... You just assume that Auchinleck are going to go through in games like that. You know, you, it's just, it's ingrained in you for uh, anybody that's been about the junior scene for years and years. It's just ingrained in you that Auchinleck are going to win those types of games. Aye. So uh, it was a big, big shock. And I'm I'm sure they'll be disappointed um, because I know it's a tournament that they always <laughs> pride themselves in doing well. Um, so I'm sure they'll be really disappointed to go out at this early stage. And Largs, again, Arne, I said last time when I was on, done a, a magnificent job at, at Largs and continuing to, to do so. Again, like you said, beating Socky, that's a tie. I would imagine probably eight, nine out of ten folk, if you asked them before the game, would probably pick Socky to win. So um, it's a great result for Largs and all the best to them in the next round. I, I think I think that obviously the Junior Cup's no quite the prestige it was before when before the teams were all getting licensed and getting into the, the big Scottish. But something for me with the Scottish Cup, the Junior Cup is really important, is the prize money is massive. It's mm -hmm. by far the biggest prize money you get at the level. Mm -hmm. um, so clubs like Largs, that could be huge for them because they, mm -hmm. they're good enough to go and win this competition, particularly if you're Talbot's not getting put out. So it is, it is a big carrot to be dangled in front. Mm -hmm. But maybe in the, the, the bigger picture, the Talbot probably, as much as they'll want to go through, it's no end of the world. It allows them less games and more time to focus on the league. Aye, I mean, one of the things that Auchinleck have always complained about, and rightly so, in my opinion, is, is the fixture pile up at the end of the season. So this might alleviate that a wee bit for them, but you're right about the prize money. And I think that's probably one of the reasons that we've seen so many teams coming back into the Junior Cup this year. Um, when I was up at the West AGM, I can't. I was talking to one of the secretaries for another club, and I think there's about eleven or twelve uh, come back into the Junior Cup this year. Um, so that's good for the, for the competition and old old guys like ourselves that have been around um, know how special a, a competition it is. So hopefully, it can get back to uh, getting those teams as many teams as we can involved. It brings a bit of prestige with them coming back. Um, we'll move on to league action now. Uh, in the Premier League, Beath 1, Gartcairn 2, Benbub 3, Glenafton 0, Cumnock and Pollock abandoned, um, Drumchapel 2, Trin 0, Hurlford 1, Clybank 4, Shots 2, Darvel 2. Um, I'll just touch on the Cumnock and Pollock game quickly. Cumnock were 2-1 up at the time. I think it got abandoned with about 15 minutes to go. A fan took no well. Fortunately, I've seen the day that the fan's all right, so... That's good news, and hopefully they're, they're back watching football next week or in the coming weeks. But um, Clyde Bank continue their, their perfect start. That's them now 7-7. Seven for seven. And Troon fall into the category, I mean, for me, like Largs, where you're no surprised if Troon go and beat everybody, but you're no surprised if Troon lose to certain teams above them as well or below them. Difficult team to beat, so... Oh, sorry, I'm talking about... Ryan game out the drum. I was looking at looking at Troon, sorry. Claybank beating Hurlford 4 1. My mistake, sorry. Um Hurlford touched on it the last couple of weeks. I think it's going to be a hard season for them. Clyde Bank, very impressive. 4 1 1 keeps them keeps them going well. Not, they're under that that goal a game thing for me with conceding. And I think at this level that's massive where mm -hmm. you you give yourself a tremendous chance if you're roughly a goal a game, you're conceding. Mm -hmm. I I think it 
and by all accounts, it looked fairly straightforward. I saw the goals, um, which I think Darren will be quite disappointed in the goals. But I think three of them came from crosses into the box, which I know Darren would expect his, his centre half or his keepers to go and to go and win those. Um, but that is them hurl for now six games without a win. Yeah. Um, and I know we touched on it a couple of weeks ago with Darren tending to run with a, a smaller type of squad and getting two men sent off on Saturday, um, which then means that they've got suspensions coming up, whether it's one game or, or three games or whatever. So that's really going to stretch the squad and, and it's important players that, that they've got suspended for the next few weeks. So um, they'll be nervous. They, they'll be looking to start to pick up points because the other thing is they've, they've got games and the, the other teams run about them have got games in hand, shots have got one and Darvel's got two in hand on them, so um, I, it's a kind of nervous time for Hurlford but if anybody can turn it around it would be Hendo, I would have every faith in him if he, if he can do a bit of wheeling and dealing and, and turn that turn that around and get a few victories on the bounce. I think something as well that and I 100% don't mean any disrespect when I'm saying this, is they've they're starting to get an aged, an aged squad as well where it's like we said, we're running on a small squad, but it's getting a bit older. I mean, you've got like Taz is still there. You've got Chris McKnight who's getting on, who all good players, granted. Big, big Robo as well. Big Robo is about 700 years old. Yeah. And it's like, again, Robo in particular for me was um, was very, very good. Mm. But it's it's hard when you're, you're getting the guys and they're getting into their mid to late 30s and it's it's really difficult to to kind of play against teams like Clyde Bank who are bringing in your Samsons, your Dean Cairns has been brought in the middle of the park, younger guys who are fresh and fit and fast and it's definitely difficult for them. Um, moving on to the drum game, who were playing Troon, no Clyde Bank playing Troon. <laughs> um, for me, that's a huge result for the drum. I, I wasn't sure they were going to beat Troon, um, but... I think they're starting to show now that they are a real force in the league and they, they can't be taken lightly. It was, it's looking like it's no been a fluke for them. And I'm no surprised because I, I know them well. This division suits them better than the first division, but it's no a fluke where they're starting to pick up really good wins. That's five wins out of seven, one draw, one defeat. And it is, it's quite an impressive start of the season for them. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. And I think the the key thing is, is winning the games that you're probably expected to win or you would look at and, and say, right, that's that's we can win that game. And if you can win those games consistently, then you'll find yourself up there. You know, and I think I know Trun would have went in with a load of confidence into the game and by all accounts there was just a couple of moments of quality or, or Drum Chapel taking their chances. Um and I think Trun had a couple of chances as well. But um I think if the Drum Chapel winning that game and like I said, two 0 up the road, job done, on to the next one, um, and then continue that charge up the table. Aye. Um, Beeth losing to Gart Cairn. Myself and, and Jamie last week when we were doing the roundup, up were mentioning how Gart Cairn really have been below par. I think last season as well, that where they finished after a, a decent start, been below par. That's a massive win for them. Um, really important. That's two wins back to back now. They've got a lot of quality in their team. Maybe that's them starting to turn the corner and put some points together. But on the flip side, Beath, they've only won two at the last five. It's hard for them this season. We always spoke about it where they lost divers and like you look at previous seasons where they lost Josh Fowler, but it looks like they've not been able to replace divers this year. And losing that amount of goals is very difficult. And they're sitting seventh in the league after seven games, dropped mm -hmm. points in four of their seven. It's definitely an uphill battle for them now. Mm -hmm. Aye, definitely. And only scored nine goals yeah. in seven games as well. Um, so it kind of goes back to what we were saying. But we know, I know Chris will, will get them all. Like I said in the, the previous show, they'll be, they'll be comfortably top six, top seven, I would, I would say. But there'll just be games where the wee extra bits of quality. I think McShane scored a free kick at the weekend and just wee bits of quality like that's going to make a difference and that's where maybe be they'll miss out like I say just those fine margins those wee flashes of brilliance that you need sometimes to win games at this level um, it sounds like Gart Cairn had it and had it yesterday and, and Beath maybe just don't have it when they need it at certain points this season 
Uh, it's, it's definitely losing like Divers and Daniel Neal. It's just, I think they're borderline irreplaceable at this level. Um, bottom of the table, we had Davo playing shots. 2 all. Davos get their first point of the season. Three games unbeaten for them. Looking like it's starting to turn a touch. Shots would have been looking to get maximum points for that yesterday, playing at home. Uh, we Ali Martin were a double. It's it's hard to see for me where these teams are going to go and pick up lots of points based off how they've been. I think Mick's a really good manager. And you get John at Shots, who's been been through the the course plenty of times. But I think the quality in the top seven or eight teams in the Premier League is so high this season that for teams like that, they have to go and take more points off the teams about them. Mm -hmm. Aye, it goes back to what we were saying about Drum Chapel winning. You win, look at the games that you, you feel, you always look at your fixtures and think we could pick up points here and, oh, we've got a tough run here. If we could take six for nine or something like that, then we'd be looking okay. And I'm sure Mick would have looked at the, the shots game and went, right, we could maybe start start our season off here um, but it's still six games without a win in the league you know it's it's a it's not a good start for them and I know they've had their, their issues and their behind the scenes stuff going on but for me I just think they're a bit inexperienced probably um, is maybe costing them I know they had a man sent off on Saturday so uh, and, and I listened to Mick's interview after the game um, and he felt that they'd, they'd done enough to win the game but they didn't, you know, and that's and that's, that's, that's uh, what matters. And that's when you're at the bottom of the league, you you need to win. You need to win these games. Um, it's no good coming off and saying, "Well, we should have won that. We should have done this." It matters. The results matter because if if you don't start picking up those results and getting those wins, then you'll find yourself in the first division. Unfortunately, that's what my my old manager Brian Hearn, when I was at Mary Hill, used to always say. <laughs> Don't be coming back in here with your coulda, shoulda, wouldas. <laughs> um, used to say that every week. Um, well, I, we, we lost most weeks. Um, <laughs> final game in the Premier League. Ben Bub 3, Glen Afton 0. That's a massive result for, for the Bens. Takes them out of the, the relegation zone. Four points from possible six for Davy Winters starting there. So the players look like they're already buying into what he wants to do. But on the other side, Caddy will be really disappointed. That's that's them lost four and drawn one in the last five after a, a pretty solid start. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be in that dog fight that we were in last year. And because I know it's like I speak to Caddy quite regularly, and I knew last season speaking to him, we trained beside him, where I could see at times it was it was getting to him and it was getting him a bit pissed off and stressed and stuff. And he'll not want to be in that situation again this season. No, no, definitely not. And I think for Ryan as well, he's an emotional guy. You know, there's there's lots of them in, in the league, there's lots of them managers. Um, he's an emotional guy, and I think it's just when you are struggling. I know when he was at, when he was at Craig Martin, they done well. It's it's easier to keep your emotions in check than it is if you're not doing so well. And if you're coming into a league and you feel like you're up against it already because of the players that you can go and sign then sometimes you might feel like you can't see any way out, out of it, if that makes sense, because you're like, well, we've just not got good enough players. But I don't, I don't think that's necessarily the case, but that's what you can feel like sometimes, yeah. and then that can lead to more frustration, and then you make bad decisions, and you, know, you say things you shouldn't say, and do you know what I mean? Things happen behind the scenes, and you fall out with people, and things like that. And I, and I hope it doesn't go that route, Um because I think, as you, as you do, I think he's he's a good manager. He's shown he's a good manager. He's got a good ability to go and sign players. So, uh, it'll be interesting. But as I said a couple of weeks ago, home games for them will be key. Um, and Ben Burb, we said with Davy and, and Robbie coming in, we would probably see an, uh, an upturn in fortunes, in it, and it's proven to be the case. Um, and I'm sure they'll, they'll pick up victories now, um, now that he's got them organised and, and sorted out. I think so. Um, moving on to the first division. Ashfield 1, The Rock 1, Blantyre 0, Mabel 1, Cumbernauld 0, Arthurley 2, Coburnley 2, Co 1 and 2, Rob Roy 0, Peters Hill 0, Renfrew 4, Aldrossan 0, Glencairn 5, Thornywood 0, Bailey Clyde 2, Irvine Meadow 2. Start with Arthurley um, and Cumbernauld. That was a, a promotion battle there. 
and Arthur came out on top. I think they've had a really strong start to the season. And I, I can't see Arthur no being them or Glen Cairn top two for the, the end of the season. But that's a really important one because I think I'm an old, even though they've just come up this year, knowing those in Nizzy, they'll be looking to go and push on as much as they can. So they'll be disappointed. But Arthur, on the other hand, it's, a, it's another really good one for them. Aye, definitely. And I think they would, every day at Arthur and the, the vibes from running about Arthur before the start of the season was that they should be up there. They should be probably winning that league. Mm. Um, they've signed good players. They've invested a fair bit. Um, but it looks at things, which is which is great um, to try and push to get back into the Premier League. And it looks like they're, they're seeing the benefits of that. And, and um, I'm, I said that they, I thought they were my favourites at the start of the season. Um, because of the business they've done in the close season, and um, and it looks like it's going to going to go that way. Just a really solid victory, you know, just to to go there and win and win two nothing. Just really solid. Aye, it's one of the ones as well. If Cumbernauld had beaten them, Cumbernauld would have been sitting joint top of the league. That shows how tight it is. Mm-hmm. But now Cumbernauld is sitting fourth place. Glen Cairn beating Thornywood five 0 I think Thornywood are a, a kind of funny team because. When I've seen them in the last year or so, I've only seen them twice, and they are no the prettiest of teams. They're quite physical and they're kind of back to front. But what I really liked about them is their defenders were defenders. Like, at Gorms didn't, for me, the way they're set up, there, there wasn't much messing about. They were very physical and direct, but they defended well. They were switched on quite a lot when I seen them. But to lose five goals, They've conceded 23 this season. It's maybe looking like it's a wee change. But Glen Cairn, on the other hand, they're 26 goals have scored in seven. They're absolutely flying. And it's hard to see past, like we said, them or Arthurley at this moment in time. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember speaking to some people during the summer and they were saying, they were kind of saying that Thornywood could pro- could maybe be dark horses to be to be up the top, challenging for the promotion spots. But if you look at the results, they've... The last six, the one one lost one, one one lost one, one one lost one. You know, so it's just getting that consistency, uh, really around the, the squad to try and if they are wanting to to make a push, um, then they need to kind of change that. So anybody that's likes a coupon back Thornywood to win on Saturday because that's the, it's their turn to win this uh-huh. week. So <laughs> um, and Rutherland just t- I mean take all seven games and not, not be beaten yet. Is a great is a great feeling, um, which I'm sure they're enjoying, and they'll hopefully just continue that. For me, the most impressive result of the the week in the first division, Renfrew beating Ardrossan four 0 mm. Ardrossan, I'm really surprised at the amount of points they've dropped already because I genuinely thought they were they were really good in the second division last year, and I thought they would push on. Renfrew had quite a tough season last season. But I think that Jimmy Quigley's got to get some amount of credit. I mean, he's just done so well with that team. And mm-hmm. they don't have great money. They, there's a lot of local boys that he has in. And I just think he does a great job. That's another fantastic result for me. Mm-hmm. Aye. I mean, the good thing about Renfrew is they've got a great facility, a great place to go and play football, which is, as you know yourself, if you're, if you're maybe not getting the most money in the world, sometimes that can be a real appeal the boys um, to go and play there and enjoy their football and, and nice surroundings and stuff like that. Um, so, I, I mean, again, six unbeaten. These teams at the, at the top of the league are winning games and if they're not winning, then they're, they're at least picking up a draw. And you're right with what you said about our draws. And I, I just feel that coming up from the second division last year, I don't think Fulzy has really strengthened the team for the step into the first division if that makes sense they, yeah. I think I don't know whether there was a wee bit where they were so comfortable in the second division last year that they thought that they could make that that the players could then make that step up without having to bring in too many um, and it's maybe been a bigger jump in terms of quality than he was maybe expecting so he maybe go out and sign a, a couple or see if he can get a couple in maybe um, to see what they can do, um, because you're right, they're kind of slipping down. And I know no one feels they were talking about emotional managers, feels he's certainly one of them as well. So I know getting beat 4 0 
wouldn't sit well with him at all. So I, I'd expect to see some changes probably next week. I think you made a good point where I personally would have thought that that team they had last year would have been good enough to be easy mid-table. And they still may be. But you look at it on the, the, the other side of it where Cumbernauld, who were second, and I didn't think were as anywhere near as strong as Adrossen last year. They're flying right up the table and Adrossen are really struggling. We had uh, the Ayrshire derby between Coburnie and Cowan, and I played in a few of the games uh, back mm-hmm. in the day. And they're, they're usually quite tightly contested matches, which it turned out to be yesterday. I actually thought that Coburnie would have would have picked that. But it's even though they're sitting behind Cowan in the league, I, I fancied them at home. But that's a I think that's a good point for Cowan just to try and keep themselves close in the hunt to that maybe third um, promotion spot. And I think Kev will be reasonably happy to go to Coburnley and get a point. Aye, and you know yourself, Coburnley's a difficult place to go at the best of times. Um, they don't make it easy for you up there. Um, so I it probably is a good point. And, and we, we said with the new manager coming in, new squad, getting them playing the way that he wants them to play and being in the mix is probably where they would expect to be. Um, whereas on the flip side of that, Coburnley probably a wee bit disappointed to be sitting ninth, I would say, just now. Right. And three games without a win now. Um, I know that they've got a, a good fan base up there, but they'll, they'll not be shy in, in letting you know if they don't think things are going well. So um, it would be, uh, I'm sure the pressure will be on Spenny and, and the boys to turn that around. Right. It is, it's, it's a big club who probably, they, going in for it in the similar um, kind of market where they probably shouldn't, their fans shouldn't be thinking they'd be in that division. Um, another club who are having a really tough time yet, Meda drawn two each with Vela Clyde. Vela Clyde, that's a good point for them, I think. They've done, they've only won one out of seven, but in the, they've only lost two out of seven as well, but the draws are going to be a real tough one for them. The Meda, on the other hand, they've won one out of seven, lost four. They haven't won in five. I just, I really think that things aren't any good down there. It's it's nowhere near good enough. And there's, there is still some reasonable money getting spent in the, the Meda to be sitting in the relegation zone nearly a third of the way through the season. Mm-hmm. Ah, yeah. And you see the... You saw the quality of players that they brought in in the summer, boys for the Premier League, and you're thinking, right, okay, they've they've got to be up there because they'll no they'll no be cheap, but they're they're bringing in quality as well. Um, and I think the way the the start to the season is nowhere near where they would be expecting to be if they if you're looking at a first division team going out and signing the come that goalie, Paul Payton, do you know what I mean? They come one of the come at defenders and McLennan and stuff like that. Boys, real quality quality players. You would expect them to be up challenging um, at the top of the table. And uh, again, it's a it's a fan base that are that are quick to let you know if, if things aren't going well. But the good thing, I suppose, from Ben's point of view, is he's got a lot of grace with that fan base due to his time there as a player. And I like Ben. I think he's a, a really yeah, good lad. Good. Out and... I hope they give him time to turn it round, but then on the flip side of that, you say, how much time do you give it? And then do you need to reassess your your goals for the season? You know, there's a, there comes a time where you need to sit down and say, right, what is realistic with the start? Are you giving us time to, to build this? Um, or are you wanting to get somebody new in? You know, these kind of conversations. So I hope they give him time, um, but it might just need a wee reassessment of their goals. And Vela Clyde, you're right, Draw is it's funny, it's a funny one though, because see when you're down the bottom of the table, a draw always feels like a point gained. Mm-hmm. But when you're up the top, it feels like two drops Aye. because your teams run about you can pick you up and, and when you're down the kind of bottom half of the table, these points can really come in handy towards the end of the season, you know, when you're just trying to keep yourself in, in the league, you know, these wee uh, last minute draws that you pick up here and there, you know, can really help um keep you in the division. So I, I'm I think it shows, it shows with Villa Clyde as well that they're a competitive team. Oh well okay. that's four out of seven that, that they've no lost. Or five out of seven they've no lost, sorry. Shows I think Villa Clyde were doing it nine men as well. 
That's a lot of lot of red cards this weekend. <laughs> I think uh, Villa Clyde, I'm sure Villa Clyde were down to nine, nine. It was definitely 10 men. I saw mm. McDevitt get sent off, but I don't know if somebody else get sent off. But I it was definitely. And I think they were, I think made a score pretty late on mm. to, well, to get a draw. I'm looking at last season's league table just now, and the Meda have won four league matches out of the last 37. And I don't know where it they've been going back before that is. Mm. I mean, it's just for a club their size, that's mm-hmm. not acceptable. It's it's just I four league wins and thirty seven games is just mm-hmm. miles out for them. Yeah, yeah. But moving on to the the second division, Bells Hill four, Craig Bart two, Lanark three, Bonnet and Nil, Lark Hall four, Les Mahego one, Mary Hill three, Canvas Lang three, Nielsen three, The Ants nil, Yoker one. Coolside Rangers 2, Cali Locos now, Whitlitz 8. Nielsen continuing their good run of form. Um, I feel like I have missed the Muir Cup game. Muir Cup get beat 3-2 beat, or 4 3 aye. Half a 4th. I've not actually I've missed that as I've been writing them down. So that's Muir Cup, their perfect run finished. Mm. And now you have Nielsen starting to, to turn the pressure up on them. That is them now, if I look at the league table, three points behind them. Mm-hmm. It's still early, very early doors. But um, I Nielsen, that's four wins and a bounce. Really, I think beating the Ants, I know the Ants aren't having a great season, but I always find going to McKenna Park can be a bit of a tricky place to go. So that's a good win for them yesterday. Mm-hmm. I definitely, and, uh, just winning games, being at the top of the league, challenging, I'm sure they would be looking at Muir Kirk, expecting, probably expecting Muir Kirk to come back to them, to mm-hmm. we all due respect, but they'd be looking at that and the teams around about on Whitlitz and Lark Hall, saying we need to keep up with these these teams round about us, um, so we need to keep winning games and, and like you said, St Anthony's now four defeats on the bounce, it's it's hard when it starts getting into that, you know yourself, when it starts getting into three, four, five games and you've, you've been beat every week, it's, it starts to have an effect on morale and numbers at training and all that kind of stuff so um, it's a wee t- it's a tough spell for them Aye, it, it very much becomes a habit when you're you're losing it's like you see teams who are winning and they somehow manage to keep getting late goals to continue through and getting that habit it's exactly the same on the, the other side of it when you're losing um, Mary Hill 3 Canvas Lang 3 that's a that's another one where we're talking about Vela Clyde in the first division Mary Hill have only lost one out of eight, but drawn five, and uh, they're losing a lot of goals as well. Nearly two goals a game they're losing. It's just they need to start picking up points because I, th- I genuinely thought they were going to be one of the teams really pushing for the top three this season. Because you look at, like we mentioned, Whitlitz, 8 0 against Cali Locos. They're showing they're a good side, and we spoke about them previously with the quality that they've brought in. They're, for me, is going to be one of the teams that's up there. But Mary Hill, if they're wanting to be at that level, which I know that Mark does, they need to start winning games. The, the mm. draws aren't enough for them. Aye, you need to win. You need to win these games. I know that one of the wins was down at Craig Mark. I don't know where the where the other one was that they've picked up. Um, but you'll be you'll be coming up against the teams that are sitting above you, and if you're wanting to make a push, then you're going to have to start taking te- taking points off the teams above you. You know, because there's. 10 points already between them and Muir Kirk at the top of the league, mm-hmm. so that's a big gap even at, at this early stage of the season if you are wanting to to push on up, up the table. So for Mary Hill, it was last week they beat, um, or two weeks ago sorry, they beat the Ants, it's both right. three so they've drawn they've lost to Lanark, drawn with Bonneton drawn with Les Mahego, drawn with Coside, drawn with Fourth and now drawn with Canvas Lang mm-hmm. and they, they again were You've touched on it where with Vela Clyde, it's a point gained when you're doing there. But if you're trying to go and do something, yeah. there's two points dropped. Um Coolside Rangers, for me, that they're a team who should be really looking to try and get themselves into the top three as well. So that's a good win for them against Joker. I know Joker can be quite a, a tricky team to beat, even though they float mid table ish a lot of the time, they're quite a difficult team to beat. So Joker disappointed with the defeat, but I'd imagine Coulsey will be, be pretty happy to come away with a 2-1 win there. Mm-hmm. Aye, definitely. And I think Joker are one of those teams where 
you never really expect to see them up there, but you never expect to see them down there either. You know, they're just always kind of there. <laughs> and, ah, exactly. Um, but it's never easy. You know, it's no, it's not to take in away from them. They're always competitive and they're a good side. Um, so, ah, you, to go there, it's one of those ones where you're maybe no, you're expecting a tough game. If you can get away with a victory, great. If you come away with a point, then so be it. Um, because I know Yoker will take points off plenty of teams this season, I would I would guess. So coming away with a victory will do cool sight the world are good, especially after for that second, that's the first one in five, probably I think. If I, I'm right. I four games um, they drove. Uh, two points, draws and two two defeats. Aye. So so to get off the skids a wee bit where we are victory against a, a hard a hard Joker team uh, uh, will do in the world of good. I think a wee mention for, for Lark Hall as well. They're kind of flying under the radar they now. They've um, won five and lost two. Four one one against Les Mejigo. And it's to keep Les Mejigo to a goal is decent because Les Mejigo score a lot of goals. They can see a, a ridiculous amount as well, but they're generally scoring three and four every other week as well. So that's a, a big result for them. And like we touched on earlier, I think one of the key things is is their defensive record. They've got the best defensive record in the league, considering nine goals in seven games. And they're keeping themselves right in the hunt. The games in hand against Nielsen and Muir Kirk, and they're only three points behind Nielsen. So they're, they're keeping mm-hmm. themselves right in the hunt. Mm-hmm. And I think they will be uh, towards the end of the season. I think they're a, they're a well drilled, organised team, a bit street wise about them as well, that know, know how to play the game, know how to win. We all know Lark Calls, know it. No an easy place to go. It's no no a nice place to go. Um, and I mean that in the best possible way Aye. for black calls terms. Um, so I, again, win their home games, teams coming up to them um, to try and take victories off them that will be difficult. So uh, I'm sure they'll keep that going definitely. I thought they were one of the best teams in the league we played last season at Craig Mark. They they gave us a bit of a, a doing um, later on in the season at our place, and I did. I thought, like you said. They're quite street wise, and they've definitely got a bit of dig about them. And I, I genuinely, but they've got quality as well. So I, I thought they were a good side. Um, moving on to the third division, Garvin one, Ardeer one, Glasgow Uni one, Kilsyth Athletic one, Glenville one, Greenock six, Irvine Vix two, Perthshire seven, the Thorn three, Dorai two, Thrive three, Luger three, Wishaw one, Finart one. We'll start with your club. Luger will be. I'd imagine you'd be pretty happy with that result. Um, can do it. Played Vela leaving. Vela leaving. Am I having a bad one today? <laughs> aye, aye. Oh no, Glasgow United played. Aye. I, I've I've just I've been rushing like I'll do that again. <laughs> three five Glasgow United one Vela leaving three Luger three less. I'd imagine you'd be still reasonably happy with the journey up to the Dumbarton way to get a, a point off of Vela leaving, who can be quite a tricky team at home. Aye, um, the short answer is no. The manager definitely was not happy. Um, it was as crab as I've right. heard them on the phone after. I think they can. They were three one up at half time, um, and then they got a man sent off. And I think they kind of bit self inflicted from what I, what I heard um, to get away with a win. So he definitely feels it. It was two points dropped, but. Mm-hmm. He said to me on the phone, he says, I mean, we're in that game, we're sitting third and now we're sitting seventh. And I was like, well, you're still sitting seventh, you know, coming up this year. So, um, I doing okay, but disappointed not to come away with a victory on Saturday. I, I, I've had one, like I said, I was out last night. <laughs> I've never been quite my sharpest of doing my results. They'll maybe take 3-3 three, three down at three. I don't aye, know. Aye, aye. They definitely would. That's a decent aye. result. I'll predict that for later. Aye, but, well, that's not to April, so we need to, hopefully I'm... Oh. Hopefully that's we're still for then. Not for April. <laughs> um, on three, five one against Glasgow United. I'm sure Glasgow United went one up on them early doors. Three are a funny team, where I know they've, they've only dropped points in two of the six games, but I feel like they are a bit. They can be a bit erratic at times as well, where they will go and batter a team. Then they lose to Glenville, who Glenville are having quite a tough season, losing six one a, a Greenock yesterday, but. Uh, it's a decent result for three, and it keeps them keeps them in the top five, which is particularly tight, to be honest. Three with a couple of games in hand, so they're they're in a position where they really should be looking for the top three. Mm-hmm. Aye, and I think they will probably. I think, like I said, I think they're a good side. 
Um, and they probably, they just lacked that bit of consistency last year when it came to the, the kind of back end of the season to get them into the promotion places. And just what you're saying there about a funny team, I think Glasgow United are exactly the same. Aye. I mean, they've played six, one, three, lost three. Yep. Um, so they're just a kind of modelling consistency. You know, they're a, they've got quality in the team um, with good Willie up front. So you know they're going to score goals probably. Um, but they just seem like you just don't know what's coming from week to week with them. Um, and I thought they would be up the top end of the table as well, probably. So they'll be looking to try and find that consistency as well. Aye, aye. Very much under the same bracket as as uh, Thornwood in the first division, where it is a win or lose, win or lose. Um, the Thorn, I thought that was a really good win for them uh, against Dorai. Dorai only having, they're kind of like Dorai, Dorai are. They're, they're very much like Yoko when we're talking about that, where they're never going to be in too much danger of getting relegated, but they seem to lack the consistency to get into the top three. But Thorn, that's, that's eight games have gone unbeaten, five wins, three draws. Under a new management now as well, I think that they, they'll be really happy to mm. go and take the three points off a decent Dorai side. Aye, definitely. And as the, the new manager at Thorn, he was, he was there before, was he not? Was aye. he the assistant? Or... He was, aye. Aye, so you're hoping that there's no too much upheaval and things just keep ticking along because, to be honest, not much really needs to change mm. with the season they had last year and then the season that they're having this year so far. Um, and you're right about Dorai again. It's just it's one of those places that it's, it's never an easy place to go. You, you you don't like going there. And the issue as well with Dorai, unfortunately, is the park, when it gets into the winter months mm. and it starts raining, they've got games are for weeks and weeks and weeks on end. And I think they, even last year, I think they moved the game to Cumnock mm-hmm. to play a home game just because, because of the, the state of the pitch. Which Do they still have that issue in the boat? Is it the boat? Aye, aye, still the same aye. issue? Aye. aye, and there's nothing they can do about it. Um, unfortunately, I don't think anyway, apart from move somewhere else. Mm. Um, and it is a shame because I think if they had that bit of stability, especially coming into the winter months, I think they could do okay. You know, because I think the manager's got a good, uh, he's got a good eye for a player, particularly mm. the kind of young younger yep, players um, up that up that way. So I think they could do okay, but that just seems to kill them every year. It's just as soon as the the weather turns, it's game half, game half, game yeah, half. It's, it's a lot to come back for. Um, Wishaw and Fanart, I think that Fanart will be really disappointed to to drop their points. Wishaw, that's the only their second point of the season. They've stopped a five-game uh, loss streak. But for now, if they want to be, again, pushing to get themselves into that top three, that would have taken them into third place if they'd managed to get the win yesterday. But Wishaw, again, on their side, to give them credit, they'll be delighted to to pick out a point. Hopefully it's something that's going to kind of kickstart their season for them. Mm-hmm. Now, like, like we said, just picking up points is is valuable. And, and for now, there's probably there's quite a lot of teams in in this league that are probably the same where you, you don't really know they could they could come down one day and absolutely batter you and pass you off the park and beat you five nothing or or you could get into a bit of a battle with them and draw one each or you know what I mean or beat them two one or something like that, you know. So it's they're a really hard team to predict um what they're gonna do, what the results are gonna do. Um but I, I like you said, wish all that they'll just be looking to try and pick up some points. Hopefully that gives them a wee bit of a spark going into the, the next few games. Um, An interesting result for me is Persia beating Irvin Vic 7 2 down, down in Irvin. Persia have had a really good start to the season. They're sitting in second place just now, and I think they're doing better than I thought they were going to I know that coming down for the second division, they're going to be one of the teams that want to try and get themselves straight back up. And But Irvin Vic's are a funny one. I thought when they beat the Meda, and I'm just checking just now. They won last week. Um, they beat Ardea 2-1 last week, so mm-hmm. it's a really good result for them. Mm-hmm. And then they go and lose seven at home to eh, Persia. Aye, I thought when they beat Ardea and then they beat Irving Meadow, like you, I thought, all right, okay, this is maybe going to turn for them. Um, and I definitely didn't see that coming. Not that I didn't see them getting beat, but I didn't see them getting a, a doing to be honest with you. Um, and 
the goals against twenty five goals against yeah. in, in seven games is is just no good no good enough if you're wanting to try and win football games. It, it's it's just no. Um, and they're going to need to do a bit of work and and tightening up at the, at the back if they're going to try and get some points on the board and, and get themselves up the table. Because I thought it would be challenging, but maybe the the manager leaving in the summer has, has had, a, had a much bigger effect than than people seem to than I certainly thought it would. Um, because I think with the new managers coming in, I think there was a wee bit of consistency mm-hmm. there. There was Aye. a wee bit of familiar familiarity um, with the new guys coming in, but. It seems like something has definitely changed because the leaking goals all over the place, and that wasn't really what they were doing before. I don't know that. I know it's uh, it's Doogie's boy that's taking the team now. Um, so it has got that same consistency as he was there. We, we spoke about Thorn having still having that consistency with the assistant manager stepping into the manager's role, but it maybe shows the impact that Doogie had as manager mm-hmm. where. Mm-hmm. I don't imagine Doogie was the type of manager that you really would have wanted to cross. Mm-hmm. He's quite a, a stern mm-hmm. character and maybe that's what worked for them. But I they really I did expect a lot better for mm-hmm. and Vicks this season. I heard some stuff, some stories about Doogie being harsh on, on the uh, players. Like in a good way though, I don't mean that in a bad way, like being having really strong discipline mm-hmm. with them a bit things that they were doing away for away for the part and holidays and, and missing training and, and stuff like that, you know. Um so whether that's maybe continued. And to be fair, if I had to take care of a routine for my dad, I would do the exact opposite for what he done anyway, just <laughs> to spite him. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you should try and do the same. Um and just to finish up, we touched on it, Greenock six one. It's a really good season, uh Flemmy's heaven with with Greenock. Glen Vale, on the other hand, had a great season last year. They're, they're really finding the step up quite difficult this season. Mm-hmm. And it is, I mean, it's, it is definitely, and I know we've certainly found that the quality of the teams and the margins are finer, like we always say, the the higher you go, the finer the margins are um, in terms of what you get away with and mistakes you can make without costing yourself goals. And one thing Green has got is They've got experience. They've got a really experienced manager that knows yeah. knows his way around and knows how to win football games, and that's really really important. And four on the spin for them just now, they'll just be wanting to keep that going and keep racking up the points. And I, I think they they could be up there towards the end of the season. I, I think so. Um, fourth division: Campbelltown four, BSC two, Knightswood four, Caluk two, New Mains one, Rossville seven, Port Glasgow four, East Kilbride one, Royal Albert one, Easterhouse two. West Park 2, St Peter's 1, Eglinton 1, Sawcoats 2, Giffnock 0, Kello 5. Top 5 all won yesterday. Um, I think this, I don't hide it, I really, really like the 4th division. Um, and I think it's going to be so tight between this top 5. I was doing watching Port Glasgow and East Kilbride. First half, quite even. Port maybe edged it in terms of chances. There were mere half chances, but they, they edged it. Um, we used to go by playing some nice football at times, kind of moving the ball well when they get the opportunity. Second half, within the first five minutes, it looked like the Port really fancied it. They just, they came out, they pressed a lot higher. They kind of, they had, Alex Waters played wide the first half and then it looked like he kind of moved into a more central role the second half. And we, with Dilza and Boo up top, who just worked like mad, I think that that as the game wore on, particularly in the heat as well, the East Kilbride defence struggled with, with just a work right out of their front three and they wore them down. 4-1 is maybe not a completely fair reflection on it because two of the goals were in the last five minutes and it was just daft mistakes for, for East Kilbride. Twice the balls went long and twice defenders have went to header it clear, came off the top of their heads and it's ran through and uh, the Port have scored for it both times. But that's the second time I've seen the Port this season, seen them against Rossville early in the season, and I'd say they look quite a bit better already mm-hmm. than they did in that day, even though they were decent that day. And I think Tam's starting to get his message across to the players, and they're starting to look good. And what I would also say to finish off with the Port is they had, I think they finished the game with five 16 and 17-year-olds playing, and not one of them looked out of place. The, the young team were really impressive, and 
I think that that bodes well for the club. Mm-hmm. Aye, and if he can, if you can get the young boys involved early, if they're good enough, then it's certainly the, the division to do it in. Um, a lot of Astro tough parks in that division as well, which is going, always going to benefit the the young ones because that's what they play on Aye. nowadays. Um, but coming down last year, they would they would be hoping to be going back up. I'm sure all the teams that that came down last year would be expecting to to try and get back up, um, especially Port Glasgow because you think about Port Port Glasgow. I mean, I think back to when I was playing. You know, they were a big a big team. Port Glasgow. You know, they were they were a big big team that, that should be higher up the leagues probably rather than the kind of bottom division in my opinion and East Kilbride I think Aaron's very very definite in what he wants them to do and how he wants them to play um, but I do think at this level it, it costs you sometimes you know I don't know if they still do that but when Aye, we, they, they when try we play, and play them they try and play and, and it's great and you, you respect it you do respect it but Unfortunately, at this level, are the players going to be good enough to carry out those kind of rotations and the kind of passages of play that you want you want them to do? You're going to lose goals. And if you say, right, okay, we'll accept that, but we want them to play the right way, then that's fine. But for me, there comes a time where you say, right, do we want to play or do we want to win right. games of football? You know, because I would, I would have thought that Aaron would have expected them to be up challenging. Now they're sitting in six, so they're not as if they're they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. But I just feel that the way they play sometimes gives unnecessary opportunities to to the opposition to get a goal here and get a goal there when they could maybe be a bit more economical with their football. Let's say that. Aye. I think, well, I, I spoke to Azza yesterday, did a wee interview and put it on uh, social media and stuff. And I, I don't remember if it was during the interview he said it or if he said it to me when we were off camera. And he was like, I try and play all the time. He says, I've had people say to me, you need to change that. He says, but he was very unapologetic. He's like, that's mm-hmm. how I want it done. Which is fine. You go, I mean, see if somebody's got to stick to their, their guns. Complete mm-hmm. respect for it. And, and the players probably... Will try it more because they know that their manager backs them. I think mm-hmm. Ross Vale is similar in the sense Josh is very much wanting to play football and I think it's admirable as well. Whereas I'm a bit more like you, I'm a bit more pragmatic where it were. Probably rather just win games. But Ross Vale are a bit different. They are, they've won six with their eight, seven one against New Mains yesterday. They'll be really happy with that one. I know Josh was uh, messaging me when I was at the port game because he was he was away for the weekend. Um so it, it was his ass was making buttons when I was telling him <laughs> the port were winning. But uh, New Mains, I'm surprised. I thought New Mains were were going to be, particularly after their first couple of games, were looking like they were going to be pushing up a wee bit higher this season. But then they've lost 4-0 last week, 7-1 this week. It's no been great for, for Davey recently, because I was planning on going down to that game, but I had a family party, so I decided to stay my local, and that's why I went to the port. But they they're gonna if they want to have any chance of trying to get promoted, they really need to start picking up points. Mm-hmm. Aye, no, they definitely do. Um, and I, I would I would have tipped them to be up the top end of the table off last season's. Uh, mm. But whether I don't, I don't really know much about how they've kind of changed things over the summer or, or whatnot. But looking at at them when when we played them a couple of times last year, um, I wouldn't have tipped them as one of the ones that would be challenging I would say it's probably a a stepping stone season for them and then maybe look at next year um, try and get win more games than you lose this year and then see where you can go next year maybe um, but maybe if they've if they've brought bodies in that they think they can make a charge then fair play to them um, Mr House late winner against Royal Albert Royal Albert still to pick up their first win of the season I think uh, I mentioned it previously I think that the management team at Easter House have done a tremendous job for how they were last year, where they were getting beat so comfortably most of the time. And now they're sitting in fifth place, only three points off of the promotion places, with a game in hand on uh, Port and Ross Vale. Kello as well, that was a good one for Kello yesterday, 5 0 against Giffnock. Giffnock, but I think it's a transitional season for them. Mm-hmm. But Kello, that's a really strong win. And then you've got Knightswood, who are still 7 out of 7. 
four two against Kaluk, and they're really they're really looking hard to see where they're going to drop many points just now. Aye, I think Knights would look as if they're going to be the team to catch. Um, again, we we touched on it. It's just the the quality that they've got. They've got that they've got that ability to win games and score goals. Mm-hmm. Um, which is going to be really key as you kind of progress through the season and you get into these games that are a bit tighter. Delighted for Greg at Kello. I know they'd have been disappointed last year coming down um, and looking to get to get back up, and that's now four wins on, on the spin for them. Again, they were... Um, again, it's a really tough place to go. It's, it's hard to attract players for, for Greg to get boys to get down there, so um, he's, he's built a decent squad, and I'm sure they'll be up there uh, towards the end of the season. Definitely. I think sometimes I spoke to somebody at the game yesterday and we were talking about sometimes relegation seems like it's a really bad thing and then when the next season comes about it's not the worst thing in the world where you look at Kello who are going to be winning most weeks and they'll maybe start getting more people through the gate a wee bit more revenue for the club because they're in that position where they're winning more and same with Port Glasgow that I feel like the Port are quite well supported and the club are doing a lot of good things and maybe I'm biased because because they're kind of like my club but they're doing a lot of good things down there Tam seems to be getting it right and they're getting more fans coming down and again it's all revenue and they're trying to do the right thing so it's good to see for clubs like that but just to finish up I want to touch on Campbelltown and beating BSC 4-2 we mentioned it earlier that you want to be beating the teams who are in and about you that's two wins out of three for them and the game they lost before the game they lost in between the the two wins was a tight one as well. So mm-hmm. it looks like Campbelltown are maybe starting to to turn a corner as well because it's been a really hard year, twelve to eighteen months for them. And I think that it's nice to see because they're a lovely club. And you know it's like yourself when you go out there, they're a really good club, and they don't have the same catchment area or players that they can get. So I think it's it's good to see them picking up some points. Mm-hmm. I definitely you'd be. I mean, I'm not saying it's hard for Greg to get boys to get into Kello, but I'm sure it's harder for the Campbellton manager to get boys to go over there, you know. And the the journey they've got today, every second week to go and play some of these games is is incredible. So fair play to the club for supporting it and the players and management committee, everybody that's involved in it. Um, but I think they'll probably still be doing the bottom of the league, Aye. to be honest with you. But um, they're no any, they're no any pushover certainly, but I think they'll still be. Aye. In there. What about Soul Coats? I was just about to say I looked at it there. Great I result. To mention it. Two one Soul Coats against Eglinton. Soul Coats down to nine men and still managing to get themselves a two one win. That's a great result for Stevie. They hadn't won the previous five games. Um picked up they've got eight points out of eight games, which I think is is a is quite a an a, an improvement on last season for them and Stevie will take maybe if he's there for another couple of years I think the team will improve Eglinton they're a funny one for me because I think most people who know it about this level know that Eglinton have quite a bit of money for the fourth division and they're no shy in, in putting about if rumours are true but for me them sitting in eighth place three wins one draw three defeats it's no good enough. It's really no one. And I appreciate they're a new side that's only their second season. But I just don't think that it's it's good enough for, for what they they have the potential to be doing. Mm-hmm. I no definitely I think great for Stevie to get that first to, to get that victory. Um because again it's it's I think any victory for Soul Coach is a success this year, like you said, coming in tail end of last year. Looking to get bodies in the door, they'd be doing the same this summer. It's it'd be hard to attract boys with the season that they've just had. So to get some wins on the board and to show that things are improving will stand them in good stead to go again next year. Um and you're right at what you say about Eglinton, but the only kind of pushback I would have is if you look at the team and the squad, I wouldn't say that's a squad that's assembled with money. For the for this level, you know, if you're looking at the the players that are in it, um, I would say you could probably get a better squad together if you have the kind of I don't know if what money they've got. I've no idea what their budget is, but if everybody everybody seems to say that they've get they've get decent, though to kind of spend, but it doesn't look like a team that you would 
assemble if you had that money to spend, to be honest. Um, I don't know why that is. I don't know who what's, what's going on, but that's just my, my opinion. Uh, it's a funny one because I've, I've never even seen Eglinton play, but I just there's things I know and things I hear and I think that they should be doing a bit better. And it's not to really like, criticise um, well, Shearer who's taking the team around. That's not what I'm doing, but I just feel like they have a lot more potential than than what they're showing at this point. But that looks like that wraps us up for another week. Um, thanks again, mate, for, for coming on. No, mate, enjoyed it. Thanks very much. No, no problem at all. Uh, thanks, everybody, as always, for watching. We have an interview that's going to be coming out on Wednesday morning with Adam Hopes, the drum chapel manager. It's it's a good it's a good chat, good hours um, conversation we had, so make sure you tune into that 8 o'clock on Wednesday morning. And as always, like the episode and subscribe to the channel. It would be greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.